We're glad to know you're still there. It's still a breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. It's time to lift from off the press uh, what made it to the uh, front pages of uh, national dailies. Some of the national dailies we're going to be looking at this morning are The Nation, The Punch, The Guardian, and of course, Nature News. Let's begin with The Nation newspaper. But before that, my guest this morning is uh, Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Thanks for having me. Yes, I hope you had a good night as well. Yes, I did. I did. Mm, good. Even though the lawyer is going to have to read. Yeah. <laughs> read hard. Uh, somebody might just uh, tell you now to go and help him get perpetual injunction. So it will bring a lot of money. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Kola. Yes, that's okay. what brings the money. Um, let's go to the, the newspapers now. But the first newspaper we're treating now, or we're looking at is the Nation newspaper. Let me just reel out some of the headlines and then we zero in on one of them. Uh, government to curb rising inflation with a cut in money supply. Uh, that's what they are saying on the Nation. Uh, I don't know how that is going to be the solution. Stock exchange joins B to boost forex availability and APC declares Aregbesholas group or groups caucus as a contraption. Okay, we also have UK police charge Deziani with bribe taking fraud. Uh, we have President names uh, NIMC boss because he has asked the other one to go on to resign or to retire. Medical, consul medical consultants uh, serve 21-day strike notice. But we're beginning with uh, uh, the, 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 the bulldozer headline on the nation. New twist in Niger crisis as Russian mercenaries arrive. And the rider on that story is Wagner Group in Mali with arms and munitions. And Abdul Salami raises dialogue hopes briefs Tinubu. Let's begin with that. ECOWAS is talking tough and Niger also is saying, well, we die here, <laughs> as we would say it. Mali and Burkina Faso are brothers in arms right now and we heard a long time ago that an agreement has been reached with the Wagner Group and by extension Russia to defend Niger. So this new twist has said that already the Russian mercenaries have arrived the country. What are your thoughts? I am not surprised that the Wagner group are already in Mali. And sooner than later, they will make an incursion into the Niger Republic. Yeah. The truth of the matter is that uh, most of the leaders that we have in the Western world today, they are ambitious. They are most likely want to kind of recolonize Africa and some part of the Middle East. When you look at uh, the behaviors of people like Putin, you look at the uh, Donald Trump and some of these other leaders, you will appreciate what I'm saying. More importantly, the African leaders have shown ineptitude in the capacity to cater for their people. And so people are using all forms of means to get into the Caucasian world, to get into the Western world, where life appears to be better. Whether they perish in the Atlantic Ocean or not, they are not very, they don't bother. And when issues are like this, the people want to protect themselves and protect their environment. And that is what is following this new scramble for Africa. First that, sooner than later, they might want to recolonize Africa. And the country like Russia will not want to stand by because of the investment it has made, especially in Africa, during the struggle for decolonization. You remember the Soviet Union? When the Western world didn't want to give us independence, it was the Soviet Union, the deformed Soviet Union, that supported us with resources, with arms and ammunition, with manpower and logistics. But after independence, they didn't benefit anything. Rather, what they were told is that it's not only that the person that digs the well 
that will drink the water. So, I suspect the Russian people sensing that Africa may be recolonized, they went and set up the Wagner Group and are using it as a kind of exploratory force to either begin to get their foothold on Africa or to begin to roll back the stranglehold of the Western world on the African countries. They retreat from uh, Ukraine by the Wagner Group. It's just a tactical maneuver. Tactical maneuver to allow them to be able to go back to Africa to continue what they were doing there. Unfortunately, most of the African leaders don't realize it. They have not appreciated it. I have written a series of articles in the newspaper, on the social media, and nothing the black race that sooner than later, if the African people, if the Middle East don't get their act together, the colonization will be revisited on them. Because the people that are unable to cater for their own livelihood, they are not better than animals. And those who are able to cater for them will not sit by and want you to come around and begin to constitute mountains on their own soil. So the race for the recolonization of Africa may have begun in a very, very subtle manner. And if we don't do anything about it, it is going to be tragic. Unfortunately, the most of the people that we have at the end of leadership in Africa today, they are very selfish people, very unpatriotic people. People are not good leaders who are not good leaders of history. And even if they are good leaders of history, they have never developed the capacity to protect themselves. And I've also been saying this, who and read the history of all animals and plants that have gone into extinction? They are the ones that are unable to protect themselves from their predatory neighbors. They are the ones that are unable to manage their own waste. They are the ones that are unable to sense the danger that is ahead of them. So, it is not just the Wagner group, the recolonization of Africa may have been in the offing. Okay, um, another headline there, just above uh, this uh, bold headline, is that the UK police um, uh, charges the Zeni with bribe taking and fraud. And uh, the, some other headlines are saying that EFCC is mum about this. They are not saying anything, but in the UK, far away UK, uh, he, she has been charged with this. Your comments, please. Well, uh, there is this analogy by General Shakopasan John which I love so much. He said the person that steals a keg of and wine, I mean the person that receives the receiver of a stolen keg of and wine, or me palm oil, is as guilty as the person that stole it. Look at the Western world. They will allow you steal the, your people's money, take it into their bank, then start all the stringent rules and regulations that they have for receiving money, for tracking money, and then for saving money. But they will first receive it, put it into their system, use it to, to, to develop their own economy, and after a few years they will turn around, go for the person that brought in the money, and then pretend that they are investigating and they want to punish the person. So many years, so many resources would have been lost in this their process of investigation. At the end of the day, they might find the person who brought the money in guilty, and then they will now begin to negotiate with you what percentage they will return to you, and now you are able to spend their spend and on what infrastructure or goals of the society you can invest the percentage that they are returning to you. So we are in a culture, is it 22 or what do they call it? It is good, like they said. And like somebody was saying in the studio, that at least we should go for whatever we might be able to get back from the and the Sima DK start money in the UK. But the truth of the matter is that uh, some years when that money was stolen, the value is not the same with uh, what it is. So the cost of uh, litigation in those places will also take as much as almost 50% of that fund. So what you might be getting at the end of the day will be mere pictures. But let's concede one thing, that at least 
they at the end of the day try to make effort. And then they also do very diligent investigation. Unlike us, they are where we will say a Mephele starts their billions in his house. He was financing uh, terrorism and all that. And at the end of the day, we bring him to court for illegal possession of a bend down. This report at the end of the day might uh, convict uh, Alice Mageke because they would have done a thorough work. Look at the number of years it has taken them to investigate her. But at the end of the day, what will be returned to us will still be pitant. And when we get it, our people are affected. They have to really looting funds that are returned to us. Yeah, the one true. that was got under the government in the time was related. Passed to, some of it passed to Konefam Bojasuki for purchase of arms and ammunition for the military to fight Boko Haram. At the end of the day, there is no evidence that those arms and ammunition were provided or were bought. The African youth should stand up to fight against the decolonization of Africa. It is the future that is at stake. Oh, well, uh, it's, it's difficult when you are not in the corridors of power to fight, except you go to the streets and you start to, start to demonstrate, which is not even allowed and all that. But you just mentioned mm -hmm. the, you just mentioned the Mephile, and it brings us to um, uh, one other um, headline, still on the nation, and they're saying government to curb rising inflation with cut in money supply. And when you talk cut in money supply, some of us who are not... Well, that is a, yes. That is a wishful thinking. Why do I say wishful thinking? We are told by the economists that what determines the value of the strength of your money is your productive base. What efforts are they making to strengthen the productive base of the Nigerian economy? In my own opinion, there is none. Merely using financial instruments to curb inflation has never worked anywhere in the world. We are talking about a country that is owing about 80 trillion of Naira. We are talking about a country that doesn't even know how much of its oil, which is its mono products, how much oil is produced, how much it sells, how much it imports to consume. So, this Bretton Woods policy for controlling inflation would have worked if it is efficacious since it was introduced during the Obasanjo era, to Yara Dua era, to Jonathan era, and now to Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinobu's era. We need a holistic approach, a very pragmatic approach to find solutions to the economic crisis that Nigeria, most of Africa and the Middle East are confronted with today. Mm. Let's move to the Punch newspaper. Some of the headlines here on the Punch are that um, AU plans fresh sanctions and Abdul Salami warns against war. Federal government, states, local governments share 966 billion Naira July revenue. EFCC mom as designing faces bribery charge in UK. We've uh, talked about that. Um, and some other headlines. But anger as states uh, warehouses rise, delay palliative sharing. <laughs> it's a story that is very funny to me right now. Anger as states warehouse rise, delay palliative sharing. It's a deja vu as far as I'm concerned. There were palliatives during the COVID era, and there were warehouses as well. And then people had to break the warehouses before they could get a hold of it. Some people were even waiting, some governors were waiting to share the palliatives at their birthdays. So it will now be like a birthday gift to the people. Some were hoarding them to use during campaigns. And so many other things that you'll be wondering what is really going on. Now, it has happened again. So the question is not whether the states are warehousing the rice. The question is that, are they really having a good plan for the palliatives money that has been given to them, five billion per state, which, if you ask me anyway, is totally unagreeable. Lagos has more than 20 million 
uh, another state up north might have like five million or so, and then you're giving five billion to every every state. That's no equity as far as I'm concerned. But I don't know uh, how they made that template to work for all of them. But this is it. They are warehousing the rice and they are delaying sharing the palliatives. In the first place, what kind of palliatives will five billion do for the people and for how long? So the question of palliatives. Do you think it's a good move in the first place? And are the states ready to do what will be beneficial to the entirety of their citizenry? What the palliative, not like we have said before, is uh, doesn't appear to be well thought out at all. It is like putting the cat before the horse. <clears throat> First and foremost, let's say this. If you say you want to face out a regime of subsidy, then you will also not be distributing palliative. Because if you begin to distribute palliative, it means you have merely taken subsidy from one place and take it to, the other, to another sector of the society or of the economy. Because the money you are spending to, to provide the palliative are money you could equally have used to continue to sustain mm. the so-called subsidy on petroleum products. So that is one. The second issue is that uh, it is unlawful for the federal government, I can't remember specifically the particular section now, but it has to do with the, finance, the finances of the federation, the consolidated revenue of the federation. Mm. But I think it's either section 88 or it's one of the constraints or the other part. The federal government cannot borrow any state any money. And then the state cannot borrow the local government any money. Whatever money comes into the account of the federal government, ordinarily should go to the consolidated uh, account of the federation, which is to be distributed by the state and the local government as part of the money to run their respective states. So when the federal government comes up, up and say they are loaning the state 5 billion to provide palliatives. I beg to say that it is unlawful. Secondly, that money has not been properly appropriated by the National Assembly. And we do have enough time for the money, I mean, to be sent to the National Assembly to be properly appropriated. That will not be properly appropriated. It's an illegal way of uh, illegal managing this palliative uh, regime. Thirdly, when you look around the world, there is no society where there is no one form of palliative or the other. In places like Britain, public transportation is uh, subsidized. In places like Britain, agriculture, especially seedling and other industries, are subsidized. You go to the UK and America and some of those places and all that, there are food banks where people who are poor, who are unable to fend for themselves, are given at least one square meal in a day. There are also a number of charity organizations, churches and mosques, that distribute foods, clothes, medication to people in crisis situations like this. We don't have that in Nigeria. And I don't know whether you watch a video on TikTok, uh, on the social media, which, graphic, which gives us a very graphic example of what this palliative is all about. That video came from a lorry in which a bag of rice was given to a whole world in a lorry comprising of more than almost 10,000 people. And the community gathered and were asking themselves that if we eat just one teaspoon is given to one each household. The one bag of rice will still not go around. So, and you must also know that this palliative thing is not going to be forever. It is not going to be for a certain period of time. Whereas there is no certainty that the prices of petroleum products will not rise in the future. If it rise, are you going to begin a new round of palliatives for the people? Well, it doesn't make sense. Also remember that a year or two or thereabouts, 
before the Buhari regime pulled out of uh, power, they awarded a Jumbo contract running into billions of naira to do turn around maintenance also to rehabilitate the refinery. What has happened? And they paid up front. What has happened to that turn around maintenance or resuscitation of those refineries? Honestly speaking, whichever way you look at this palliative regime, it's never going to work. In fact, if it is not properly managed, just like we saw, I think, in Adamawa, it could generate a very serious crisis situation in which there could be riots, there could be uprising against the government. So they are better watch it. These yeah. politicians also want to use this little thing to begin to lift capital, to begin to make statements, to begin to do, do it as if they are doing the ordinary man on uh, the ordinary Nigerian a word of good by giving them a teaspoonful of rice, then they had better watch it. The I government should go back to the drawing board and find solutions to this thing. Like uh, it's done in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia doesn't impose any hardship on their people. They produce oil and then the oil, they continue to subsidize it. They also subsidize housing. And you also not see any child or any old person on the street in Saudi Arabia begging for harm or working at al Majiri to fend for themselves at a very tender age. So these are the dangers that lie ahead. Well, uh, Saudi Arabia, does Saudi Arabia practice democracy? Like, it is not. It is not. Like, okay, so mm -hmm. so it's not a democracy. But there is no perfect democracy anywhere in the world. Yeah, because I was just going to the fact that uh, they keep telling us mm -hmm. that uh, democracy is the best. Uh, it's either democracy or it's nothing. Uh, that the the worst democracy is still better than any other form of government and all those sort of things. Mm -hmm. But right now, this palliative Wait. money, the five billion, by the way, we didn't hear. We just heard that there will be five billion. The time that we got to hear that the five billion has already been paid was when the federal government started telling the states that you have to return 48% to the state. Uh, we are only giving you like 52% of that money. The rest will be returned. And the governors were kicking against it that if we, if we have to return it, then it's not palliative anymore. That's when we got to hear. Otherwise, as a person, I didn't hear it had already been paid. I still kept thinking that they were going to pay to the state governments until this happened. Right now, we've found out that uh, the palliatives themselves are being hoarded <laughs> by the government. This is really funny. Mm -hmm. Very, very funny. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. You, so, you know? Yeah, go ahead. You know, under, I think it was under Dr. Gulo Jonathan, in which monies were similarly given to the state to address certain challenges that they were having. You remember the governor didn't tell anybody or their people, and the federal government also didn't tell the Nigerian people mm. such money was made available. Yeah. It was through the present Minister of War, I mean, Federal Capital Territory, yes, on Wiki, that we got to know that a jumbo amount of money was given to the state, and that he was using his own to construct a wide bridges in the state. The Delta governor was said not to have used the money for anything. And uh, some human rights body have not taken to court. It was also discovered or reported in the media that some other governors used the large chunk of those money to buy cars and then improve their wardrobes in the respective states. Rather than using the money to provide for their people. It went into Keating, wife of the local government chairman, wife of public officials, buying cars for all manners of political appointees, leaving the roads, the hospitals, and the schools in very de 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 deplorable uh, 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 conditions. We require to be transparent in addressing whatever money go into the state, the local government, and to the federal account. I remember, I think Yaradua at the time was publishing 
whatever allocations are given to the state mm. and the local government, each time money is shared at the federal level, somehow that program fizzled out. I think under Dr. Gulok uh, Jonathan, the Nigerian people should begin to hold their people accountable because in the way when you look at it, the so-called removal of subsidy is mere punishment for the Nigerian people for the indolence of the political elite who have been able to manage not just the petroleum sector but the society at large. They say they take the petroleum product across the border. They say some people are being paid subsidy for where they didn't supply. What is the responsibility of government? Is it not to ensure that the borders are not porous? What is the responsibility of government? Is it not to punish those who might steal a public fund? In my humble opinion, it is not to punish the Nigerian people. Okay. I, I, I usually say the removal of fuel subsidy and bringing of palliative is like uh, destroying the community bridge and then giving canoes mm. to people to ferry themselves across the same river that, that the, the, the bridge was exactly. on. So now the common mm. bridge that everybody could pass, you have destroyed it and now you've brought canoes and there are some people who cannot access the canoes. Well, uh, well um, you are correct. Let's go to Nature News. Um, there's a headline here. WAPAN begins registration of waste pickers in Nigeria. Says that waste pickers promote clean environment and <coughs> provide employment and reduce crime. So would like to get your take on this registration of waste pickers. Well, those who are saying this, why don't they encourage their own children too? to be waste pickers. If you look at the condition in which those people, men and women, go to pick this waste and all that, you will agree with me that they are exposed to all manners of uh, diseases. Furthermore, so, some of those things, especially electronic uh, waste, can be cancerogenic, can be cancerogenic. Because some of them, their components contain some manners of chemicals and radiating agents that could be debilitating to human existence. So why are you going to be encouraging your people to be waste pickers? In other parts of the world, waste baskets are provided in homes, in offices, and on the streets. There will be a waste basket for metals waste baskets for paper and waste baskets for plastic and for other items. And then the waste people who go to the home, to the street, to some of these places to pick these things and take it to some refuse dump where they are cleaned up and then recycled. I recollect that Alaji Jaconde was building waste recycling plants all over Lagos. There is some at uh, Isolo here, one at Isolo here, some on the Lagos Island, and veto some of these other places. When the military came to power, when they overthrew the government in 1984, they stopped all that project. Unfortunately, when the civilian people came again, rather than resuscitate the project, they killed it. It's not impossible. Now, some of those waste recycling plants have been sold to those who will build houses or residential quarters on them. Then why can't we also hold those who generate this waste accountable for the waste that they generate? Those who produce uh, drinks in which plastic is used, before they distribute, we could make sure or we could insist they must have a way of getting back all the plastic when they do their distribution. Those who produce uh, uh, bottled water, those who produce uh, the popular sachet water, we could tie it to their 
uh, agreement or contract with the state, a program of calling back, of, me, of collecting the waste that they degenerate, rather than encouraging and exposing our children to so those as adults who in the different places uh, uh, they are engaging in this. Furthermore, also note that uh, those waste dumps have become a kind of a center for breeding of criminality. I have too many times read in the papers in which police have apprehended some of these I mean, suspects, and then the suspect will take them to the waste dump where they are hiding their weapons for carrying out their nefarious activities. So, also look at the state of those waste. Are they properly managed? Do we disinfect the waste dump site? Do we close them up on time when they should be closed up so that they don't begin to endanger the society? What is the implication of those waste dumps on underground water that we have all over the places? So, it's a, a short-sighted way of creating jobs for the youth, but would which you, we should not support or you, encourage the government would, to... Would you rather have upon. them, because they are here with us now, would you rather have them practice without any form of recognition? Because uh, this registration seems to be uh, something that will give, will make it legal uh, for, on the one hand, and make it possible to monitor them on the other hand, and uh, so much more. Whether we like it or not, some youths are engaged in it, whether they are exposed to diseases or not, and this is what they see as their own form of livelihood. So, taking it away from Don't them... Don't forget. Yeah. Don't what? forget. Okada riders and those who ride the Marwa were supposed to be registered at certain time. Mm. As it worked, if it worked, most of the state will not be banning the use of Okada and then on the highways or in the communities. Most of when we say we want to register people for one reason or the other, you find out that in our climb, it has not worked. Because when it works, we will be transparent into the wheels of those who are profiting mm. from the chaos and anarchy that all our societies have become. Okay. Well, um, this is where we will have to wrap it up uh, for th this morning, Tunde Kolawole. Thank you so much, as usual, coming to give us your thoughts on issues that have arisen. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, permit me to quickly pay my condolence to Senator Adiola, whose uh, personal assistant was killed in Lagos. Mm. Uh, may the soul of the departed uh, PA to the senator rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And we want to employ the security agencies to leave no stone unturned to apprehend uh, whoever may be behind it. I happen to know Senator Adiola. We worked in the same place for some 10 years, mm. precisely at the Guardian newspaper. Thank oh, you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, uh, the, the senator's aide was killed um, by what they are calling a, a killer soldier. And uh, the association that is mourning this uh, aide is saying that uh, this killer soldier should be brought to book. Whoever it is, whether it's a soldier or a civilian or whoever is responsible uh, for all these killings, everybody should be brought to book. Crime should never be encouraged. Well, we've just uh, been talking with uh, Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State, and we were looking at the headlines, some of them that we were able to cover. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll go to our first hot topic for today. Stay with us.